I'd like to welcome y'all to Secrets from the South. I'm your friend, Scotty Ray, along with my co-host, Terry. Now, you'll quickly catch on that we don't sound like the man on the 6 o'clock news. We talk a little slower, and we've got a southern drawl. But nonetheless, we've got a great podcast lined up just for you. We'll bring you some interesting stories. They're sometimes crazy and a little unbelievable, but it would be just plain impolite not to share them. So get yourself comfortable. Find some southern charm and a glass of iced tea and enjoy. Terry and I'd like to welcome you back to another episode of Secrets from the South. Now, we've talked about pets a good bit. Well, they're important to all of us, but we've got a different story this week. I hope you'll sit back and enjoy this. This week's episode is titled, The Cat Named Roommate. Terry, as I was thinking about what we ought to talk about this week, of course, uh, you know, uh, what, a month, month and a half ago, I lost one of my little best friends I ever had. Yeah, JJ. Breaks my heart. He uh, he re- was here with us uh, in the studio whenever we done podcast. Relentless. Never left. He he loved it up here. And I mean, people get attached to their animals. I'm raising my hand right now. I am so attached to mine. I mean, we're get- put it this way, Scotty. We're getting ready to go on vacation next week. Yeah. And I've got somebody, wonderful person, thank goodness, that's going to come over and stay with my two dogs. And my my cat is self-sufficient. I love her, but she's self-sufficient. I mean, you get so caught up in your animals that I'm like, okay, well, i got to make sure they're fine. It's easy to do. And I know that J.J. was a, a big part of you doing your profession and then us doing the podcast he was just kind of a, a staple being up here in the studio and i feel for the little fella because he was killed doing what he loved best and that was looking for a woman <laughs> and you know i can see his little head right now bouncing down the road with uh, uh staying alive you can tell by the way i move i'm a woman's man prancing yeah that was him Bless his heart, he never caught a woman in his five years on this earth. He wanted one real bad, but he never had the opportunity. Well, it sounded like that, unfortunately, was his demise. It was, and uh, a woman got him in the end. And uh, bless his heart, he just he walked out into a major highway, he slipped away from me, and I didn't know it, and he got down the road a mile or so and uh, walked into a major highway. You know, and as I go back, I remember my first dog. My first dog was Bobo, and bless his heart, he died of old age. Then we had a, a dog named Squirrely. I had a dog named Gracie. Gracie would, uh, she was, I guess she was 14. And then uh, Buck, Buck was 15 when he passed away. I've had, uh, growing up, dogs my whole life. Thank goodness my parents were avid animal lovers. And you do, you can recite on all your hands. I had this one, I had that one, I had this one. And fortunately, most of them live to be old they just become a part of your family i've always uh, you know i don't trust as many people if they don't like dogs it's a sign of something that's not right and i think uh, we've talked oh about yeah my before. mother used to tell me honey if they don't like an animal you don't want them because they're not going to be good with kids now somebody may argue that point but i find it to be more true than oh, not yeah for me now maybe yeah. it's different for other people but i'm just maybe it's because i'm an avid animal lover myself but if you don't like the animals at my house We probably weren't going to have a lasting relationship anyway. And I know that we've got to get another dog because, you know, we had two dogs and one is named Sophie. Oh, yeah, and they start, they they mope. She's just laying around. It's like Yeah, she needs another buddy. Yeah. Even though she attacked JJ uh, from time to time, it it does look like she is uh, mourning. Yeah, and it was was her job to to wait in, uh, what is it, wait, uh, lay in wait? Is that the word Oh, and I used to see her doing it all the time. (laughs) She'd hide behind the bush and let him get out there and try to go to the bathroom, and then it was on. She'd terrorize him. Yeah, and he'd look, try to find a car to get to to get away from her, and he couldn't. And see how fast he could get back in the house. (laughs) But, you know, things like that. But what I didn't know, now in the Deep South, I've seen this with coon dogs, to where there's an actual place to where people bury their dogs. Uh, outside of, uh, you know, like a coon dog cemetery, I've never seen that done. But did you know that Los Angeles has a huge pet cemetery? No. And, and you were telling me that there was a movie? Is, am I right? Yeah, there was-, there was one by Stephen King called Pet Cemetery. And really the whole gist of it, and I read the book a long time now, ago. Now, if you said his name, it was a spook show then. But, you know, you start reading it, and it's you get caught up in the family that has this beloved dog and then i can't remember the the book you know i read it years and years ago 
But something happens to it, and then they find out that if they bury this dog in this pet cemetery, and either it's by chance they find out or they know this, the dog comes back. At first glance, they're elated because this is their beloved dog. Rovers come home. Exactly. But then they quickly find out the dog is not quite the same. And I guess that kind of poses a question. If you had the ability to bring some of your animals back, would you take that chance? No, I, w- I would not. Uh, they went on to heaven and, and just let it be what it is. I think you'd be tempted because, you know, there's, as with any death, there's a, you know, there's a hole. Oh, it's a big hole. And I think you'd be tempted to want to bring that animal back because they gave you so much joy that you miss them and you'd want them back. But then, as you find out with Pet Cemetery. And, of course, this is a book that I think came to be made into a movie. It didn't work according to plan. So it was the the doll come back mean, that kind of thing? Oh, yeah. I mean, because you think about it, this is talking about a Stephen King movie. So we always have to put that kind of scary, you know, plot in it. Hmm. Well, the name of the cemetery of it is the Los Angeles Pet Memorial Park. And it's full of pets. I didn't know this. Really? As you get into this, do you remember uh, Jimmy Durant? Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. His Irish setter is there. Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall's Cocker Spaniel Droopy is buried there. So it's it's a lot of famous animals there. I mean, that would be a cool place. I mean, I know it sounds kind of weird, but that would be a cool place just to see all the famous people that went to the trouble of making sure that their dog or, I guess, cat or beloved pet was properly buried. Now, have you ever heard the name Pete the Pup? Does that ring uh-uh. a bell with you? Uh-uh. Pete the Pup, if you go back to the Little Rascals. Oh, okay. Petey. There was actually two dogs there. And, of course, he was born with, you know, that little uh, circle oh, yeah. there. And then they put eyeliner or something on it, and it, it stayed with the dog. And the very first one that was in the movies until, I think, 1928 was poisoned. And he was placed there. It, I, I had no idea. Huh. He made more money than the kids did. He was making one hundred and twenty-five dollars a week, and the kids didn't make that much on the little. Oh rascals. my goodness! So I wonder: is Dog Heaven is it still active today? Yes, they've got a website. You can visit it and take a look at what they offer. So, do they have any recent burials of like new animals that have been buried there, or? Well, you you say that, but I don't recognize any of the new ones. I recognize some of the older ones there, and I'm sure that there's some famous ones there that is current, but I just don't know them. Uh, here's one. Do you ever you remember the MGM thing to where any movie that you watch, you saw that line that oh, rolled? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's buried there, and its name is Tawny. Now there have been several of them. The very first one was Tawny. Wow. So it's buried buried with its best friend, a cat. Huh. Interesting enough, there. Jigs, and you say, well, who is Jigs? I would have never known who Jigs is. Tarzan, the chimpanzee. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is buried there. Interesting. You know, I think when we think about burying an animal, I've even had people that will go and they'll get a tombstone for their beloved pet right. and have an inscription on the tombstone. Or they'll have a kind of a certain area where they go and they bury their animals. I mean, we've even had a little ceremony where we've had kind of an impromptu one. I don't mean that we've gotten our pastor to come out or anything like that. But I will say this. I've heard of it. That our pastor will bless. We have, um, I can't think of what, but it's a certain day of the year that he blesses the animals. Now, I have not heard that. And we'll take our animals. And with COVID, it was drive through. But he does a little service and he blesses the animals. Wow. And you load up all your pets. So I'm just telling you that kind of goes into how much people really love their animals. And we all to know this because we know that it's a billion dollar business where you have everything under the sun for your animals that you didn't have 30 years ago. I mean, we have everything for them. So I could kind of see, but this is something that was founded in 1928. Think about that. That Back then, it probably wasn't that common. Right, it was you know, not. If you lost an animal, like I said, you might have had a tombstone for it, but chances are you found somewhere in your backyard and you buried it. Just out of thought, this ran through my head, and you need to ask your preacher this because it, it ran through my head, and I just wondered if maybe he'd ever been faced with this. Has anybody ever brought a snake for him to bless? Because you know, kind of that, that represents something else. 
Uh, no, I have not heard of him saying that he has, but hey, you never know, because there are people out there that truly believe that they have snakes as pets. Yeah, I know. I cannot imagine. I remember when my brother and I were growing up, and he went over to spend the night with some dear friends of my parents, and their kids were the same age as my brother and I. He woke up to they had taken the snake out of the cage and had it laying on him. No. I would have come unglued. There are people out there that have snakes as pets. Yeah, I just I can't imagine it. But as you said, that's that was started in 1928, and we done just like you were probably thinking. I, I found an oak tree in the backyard, and I buried little JJ out by the oak tree there. And I did it by myself; no one else come. But I know people that have a full blown, and they don't live far from you. Every animal they've ever had. I mean, it's funeral services. They dress for it. The whole it's a big deal for them. Well, I remember as a kid, and I can't even remember the animal that died or something like that, and all the kids in the neighborhood gathered at a certain time, like they'd said, okay, today at 3 o'clock, we're going to have the ceremony. You know, as kids, I mean, you kind of took that serious even back then. I mean, it wasn't something you were laughing about having to go to attend. It was a beloved animal for a friend. They were with heavy heart that they had to bury this animal, and so everybody was there in attendance. And all of this leads to, I stumbled upon this this week, and what a story it is. The name Room 8, you know, that sounds like it's just a room down the hall. It does. But it's so much more to it. As we look at this cemetery, Room 8 is buried there, and it has the largest headstone of any other animal in the cemetery. And Who is Room 8? Room 8 is a kitty cat. Really? What's the history on Room 8? Well, Room 8, like you said, kids. It really dealt with kids. The cat loved kids. I can't remember the name. Do you, uh, the name of the school? It was in, I think, in Los Angeles. Oh, the Echo. The Echo. The kitty, I think he was like 20 years old. Started around 1947, and he showed up to school one day in the 1950s. I see the article. It says, Roommate, the cat that adopted an Echo Park school, died 50 years ago today. Now, this was an article that was published in August the 13th of 2018. So, This is, what, now 53 years old the cat would have been? And it goes on to say that Room 8, again, is the name of the cat, first made his appearance in 1952, wandering into the elementary school during recess and ransacking the children's lunches. It goes on to say the, the students named him after the room where they found him, and he lived at the school while classes were in session and then disappeared during the summer, returning again only when students did. For the 16 years following his arrival, he wove himself into the community and Los Angeles history. So it makes you kind of wonder, did Room 8 even have a family, or was he just kind of a stray? And his family was those school kids at Echo Park for years. Yeah, from what I've understood, he 100% stray was like an alley cat. And kept coming back year after year. And then in the end, from what I understand, Room 8 gets in a fight with another cat and is injured. And someone that lived across the street, they would carry the cat over during the day to the school and then take it back at night to the people across the street that would care for it. Oh, okay, so it did have a caretaker. It ended up after it got that, injured. Right. Well, it says, and this cat was popular. It says during his time at the school... Room 8 received more than 10,000 pieces of mail from all over the country. That's and this strong. was a long time ago, 50-something years ago. And in his life, he never took a permanent home. He was always technically a stray cat. So when he died in 1968, the students wanted to give him a permanent resting place. And again, that's why he ended up at the Los Angeles Pet Cemetery. Now, in what they did, they did a nationwide collection, if I'm not mistaken, didn't they, Terry, for the, to, to raise money? Yeah, absolutely. And it says the whole history of Hollywood celebrities has their pets in that cemetery, and I think you just mentioned several of them. And it says, yet the cat, that homeless cat who adopted a school, has a bigger memorial than any of them. And you said that, and to this day, the grave is still the most visited. That's a neat story, is it not? I think that we underestimate what animals do. Think about, there was something just the other day, Scotty, I was watching on TV, and they had this was in our local community, and they were talking about they had rabbits 
that they were bringing into schools and how it had a calming effect on children. So you take this roommate yeah, and how those kids really kind of adopted roommate and looked forward to petting roommate. Now we're starting to see where you've got animals, mainly from what I've seen, some type of dog that goes into a hospital. Yes. You've got people that have been in there for a long period of time, especially a children's hospital where they can go in and give comfort to anybody. And then now they're putting them in like nursing homes and things like that. And I'm thinking they've been bringing us joy since we were kids. Otherwise, why would you be able to regurgitate all of the names of your animals if they weren't beloved animals near and dear to you gave you a lot of joy i just don't know of an animal that doesn't if they're treated with care and kindness that we're just now figuring out that they can help someone who's lonely someone who's sick someone who's in school we have gotten for a long time but i'm glad to see that they find that animals can serve a purpose And this is probably one of the coolest little stories I've ever run up on. If you get a chance, Google that and take a look at the old cat. And I think they've even gone as far as to uh, putting paintings and pictures of the cat at the school. It's still celebrated, even though it's been 50 years ago. It's still a part of that school. And what I find fascinating is the fact that, again, they're saying that this is a stray cat and that it knew school's out, there's no kids there, and it would just kind of vacate, and who knows where it took up residency for, what, approximately three months. Yeah. But instinctively knew to come back. Well, they said it got to the point where on uh, opening day of school, the first day of school, the TV cameras were there to film him coming back because he always showed up at the same time. I saw an, a thing where there were two dogs, and they were sitting there, and they, they started filming this where when they're – master or their owners were going to return one in particular the dogs would start pacing and this was in a metropolitan area where you coming home after your commute anybody that lives in a big city can tell you you never know if it's going to be 45 minutes or if it's going to be two hour and 30 minutes you know you may end up getting a traffic jam you've had a wreck not you the person but i mean you may be involved in having to skirt around a wreck it, there's been delays you left early whatever never knew the exact time of when they were going to arrive but those animals did Neat. and so they did it on purpose they would have them leave a couple of hours early and come home and they would video in about i don't know however long it took them to make the drive those animals would get up and start pacing and within that period of time they'd show up then they'd have them come all right they'd tell the owners come a couple of hours late and guess what right before their arrival they'd get up so and they, pace. you're saying they can sense it when you're coming. they can sense it and so you think about oh cool room eight you know instinctively it had the ability to know when those kids were coming back either wandered the street and said okay yeah the kids are back but it's almost like it instinctively knew when they were going to be there and when they were not. Terry, there's countless stories that you can look up about the loyalty of animals, most of them being, you know, dogs of the term man's best friend. Uh, some of the towns I can't pronounce, I've, I've never heard of some of these places where, where they're from. But here's an example of one that a guy passed away, he's buried, and the dog, it happened in 2006, and the last article on this was written in 2015, and every single day from 2006 through 2015, the dog went to the graveyard and laid on top of the grave where his master was. If that doesn't speak loyalty, I don't know what does. And I'm just looking at the picture and it just breaks your heart. I mean, the dog is just kind of laying there like he knows that that's where his buddy lies. Here's another story of, that took place in the 1940s of a guy goes off to, to fight in the war. The dog went to the train station with him. And the guy gets killed, and the dog went to the train station every day for 14 years. I believe, yeah, 14 years every day to wait to see if his master would get off. You know, and you talk about that and the loyalty that these dogs had for their owners and just the instinct of how they knew how to 
find the bus station, how right. to find the train station, how to find where the soldier was buried. That's the same thing with you have for roommate. Roommate knows how to get to the school. And roommate knows when school starts and when school closes. Countless stories of people that have been put into the hospital and then somehow or another the dog finds his way to the hospital to the room that they're at. You know, waits for the door to open, darts in, and uh, makes it to the room. Just heartwarming stories. Here's a true story. One of our first dogs that we had is, was a German Shepherd, and this was a real creative name that we, my brother and I gave him, but you had to realize we were young at the time. His name was Boy. And we lived in a subdivision, and, you know, he just looked intimidating. He was not intimidating at all. But because he was a German Shepherd, some of the neighbors felt uneasy about him. So my right. dad said, well, we got to get Boy up. We're going to give him to a good home. He li- the, they had a place out in the country. Now, keep in mind, we lived in town. And where he took him was about was a guy that he worked with. He said, look, the, the dog's going to be great. Broke our heart. You know, we're squalling like babies because we were attached to him took him out to the people that i'm sure took great care of him they lived about i don't know 10 15 miles out guess what happened in the next couple of days true story you're kidding showed up at the house wow so that tells you that you got roommate you got boy you got all of these other dogs not only are they loyal they're smart they're smarter than we give credit for for him to know how to find his way back for roommate for all of these pets to find their way to where their loved ones are i mean how can you not love man's best friend almost takes me back reminds me of that old girl that wouldn't forget my address there you were also telling me you had something else you wanted to share so scotty guess what we're coming up on our first year anniversary (laughs) i'd say it ain't so can you believe it? It just seems like we started this yesterday. A year already has yes, passed. Yes, and it's been an awesome journey, and we want to be able to do something to thank our audience. So here's what we're going to do. Okay. We're going to thank our audience by giving away some awesome, comfortable T-shirts that have Secrets from the South on them. Have you seen it yet? I've seen them, and they're awesome. I can't wait to get one myself. You and I are going to be sporting one of those here shortly. So we'll be, what do they call them, Quins, twins? What do you call I don't know. (laughs) Anyway, what we're going to do is, for anybody to enter, all you have to do is post a picture of yourself with a sign that reads, I listen to Secrets from the South from wherever your hometown is. So, for an example, I listen to Secrets from the South from Atlanta, Georgia. And you can email this to us at comments at secretsfromthesouth.com or post it to our Facebook or Instagram page. Now, the deadline for the entry will be June 30th, so that'll be here before you know it. If selected, we'll be back in touch to get your shirt size. And don't forget to enter. Send your photos in now. You don't want to miss this. So you could be anywhere from Bentley's Corner, New York, to Roundup, Montana, right? Absolutely. You know, whether you have a cat, a dog, a rabbit, whatever it is, it's a pet, and most of us love them, and we'd do anything for our pet. But there's also a dark side out there that exists. There's millions of pets that are abused each day, and as we all know, a pet can't speak for itself. So I ask you, if you see a dog, a pet, a cat, anything being abused, speak up and help the one that can't speak for themselves. There's most likely an organization like in our neighborhood, Roadside Rescue Network, Find them on Facebook. They help a pet when no one else can. We hope you enjoyed our podcast and will continue to listen more. We promise to provide stories that intrigue you, provide a little humor, reflect our heritage and culture, whether it's strange and alarming. Please leave us a review and let us know how we're doing. Let us know whether you liked or disliked. Do you have a story to share? If so, we'd like to hear from you. Please email us at comments at secretsfromthesouth.com and provide a brief description of your story along with contact information, and we'll be in touch. Until next time, well, you know a secret. Well, you know man's best friend.